Good afternoon, students. In today's video, I'm going to talk about spaceships. In other words, why do some science fiction stories use organic spaceships, such as this one, and why some um, science fiction stories, like Star Trek, use inorganic uh, spaceships. And so this is part of my ongoing video series about science fiction around the world, where I started out with the research question, um, is there science fiction around the world? And I came up with the uh, great discovery that yes, there is science fiction around the world. And so today's video is going to feature um, why some uh, science fiction stories use organic um, spaceships versus why some science fiction stories use inorganic uh, spaceships. And so reading is a lot of fun because it allows us to escape reality and it allows us to increase our imagination, increase our empathy, and improve our writing. For it's true that the more you read, the better you write. So I always encourage my students to read, read, read so that they can write better. And at the end of all my writing and literature classes, I always want my students to become lifelong lovers of both literature and writing. So I'm going to begin today's uh, video about spaceships. What fun! So today's lecture is going to be about organic and inorganic spaceships. And so I put in, so here you have examples of inorganic, I mean, here you have examples of organic spaceships. And here the uh, aliens become their spaceships. And the alien and the spaceships are linked together uh, symbiotically. And so here you see an interconnectedness between nature and man, or nature and alien which reflects the culture in which that science fiction story was written. Now all of these pictures were made by Bing AI, because here you see the BBB, and what I did was I placed the exact description from the book into the AI generator description box, and then the uh, Bing AI came up with these images for the book. So you gotta know that these images are not part of the book. These are just part of, these images are just part of this presentation. So metal inorganic spaceships, which are used in Star Trek, versus organic African uh, sci-fi spaceships, which is used in these two African-themed uh, science fiction stories. So here you have a African science fiction story by Nnedi Akorafor, named Binti, the complete trilogy with a brand new Binti story. And so this is uh, written uh, by an African uh, writer who writes African sci-fi uh, stories. And here you have uh, Xenogenesis by Octo uh, Octavia E. Butler. And she wrote African American science fiction stories. And she used African themes in her African American stories to uh, write uh, Xenogenesis. So we're going to discuss today two African-themed stories that use organic spaceships because in African culture uh, there is a great connection or interconnectedness, interconnectedness between man and nature. It shows that we are all part of one nature and we are all part of one universe and that man is not separate from the universe and that man does not use technology to separate himself from the universe. Instead, man and nature and technology all merge together as one. So that is that reflects uh, African culture. So I will discuss that. So that's why today I have a uh, organic um, spaceship background, which is kind of fun. Science fiction writers have the freedom to craft their science fiction worlds as they see fit. And their choices are driven by the imagination and storytelling objectives of their story. Thus the distinction between inorganic metal spaceships in Star Trek and organic spaceships in Binti 
by uh, Inbinti and Octavia Butler's works can be attributed to narrative themes, cultural context, and the author's creative choices. While Star Trek emphasizes advanced technology and American space exploration narrative, Binti and Butler's works explore themes of identity, interdependence, and cultural perspectives through the lens of organic spaceships seen in these two uh, African-themed uh, sci-fi stories. An organic spaceship, as the name suggests, refers to a spaceship that incorporates organic and bio biological elements into its design and functu functionality. In science fiction, the, co the concept of organic spaceships often involves the fusion of living organisms with advanced technology, resulting in vessels that possess uh, biological properties and capabilities. An organic spaceship can be imagined as a living entity or a symbiotic combination of living organisms and technology. An organic spaceship has the ability to self-repair, adapt to its environment, and interact with its crew on a deeper level. These ships, organic ships, often exhibit characteristics of sentience, allowing for a more intuitive and interconnected relationship with the crew. In this video, we will discuss how African and African-American science fiction use organic spaceships to indicate man's interconnectedness with nature versus Star Trek's use of metal spaceships indicating the American fascination with technology and the connection of man and technology in Star Trek versus the organic spaceships sig signifying the connection of man, nature, and technology in African sci-fi and in African-American sci-fi. And it's important to note that African-American science fiction is American science fiction. For that's what makes American science fiction different, uh, is that it's, it's diversity. For the first half of the 20th century, um, American science fiction focused on European uh, um, science fiction. And then the second half of the 20th century, um, had more diverse voices in science fiction, such as African American science fiction. So the first story, uh, and, and then in both Binti and in both Dawn, so in Binti by no, uh, Nora um, Nettie Akorafor, and in Dawn by uh, Octavia Butler, both of these stories use organic spaceships, but the big difference is that in Dawn by Octavia Butler, the main character Lilith is a prisoner in, on the Ankali alien organic spaceship, whereas Binti is the owner of her organic spaceship, and eventually Binti becomes the, um, uh, the, the, the spaceship. So the only similarity between these two stories is the fact that these two spaceships are sentient, biological, and can communicate uh, with the with the uh, uh, characters in the uh, story. So the usage of organic spaceships is rooted in African culture because of the African culture's uh, um, interconnectedness of man and nature. In this video, we will study why these two novels use organic spaceships and how the use of organic spaceships changes the dynamics of the science fiction story. So part one of this video series will cover African-American literature with Octavia Butler's Xenogenesis books. Then part two, uh, I will cover uh, Binti and Nettie Akorafor's um, Binti sto African stories. And then the third part of these, the video series, I will go over the inorganic spaceships of Star Trek. What is the difference between African and African-American science fiction? African-American science fiction is influenced by the unique experiences of African-Americans. It reflects the African-American cultural, social, and historical context, often addressing themes such as slavery, racial discrimination, social injustice, and the African-American identity. It explores the African diaspora and the struggles and triumphs of African Americans 
in a predominantly white society. African-American science fiction tackles themes related to the African-American experience, including racial inequality, identity formation, cultural assimilation, and the search for liberation and equality. It often delves into Afrofuturist concepts, exploring the intersection of African and African-American cultures with technology, space, and futuristic visions. African-American science fiction reflects the history and social context of African-Americans, including the legacy of slavery, the civil rights movement, and ongoing struggles for racial equality. It addresses the complexities of race relations, systematic oppression, and the quest for empowerment within the African-American community. African-American science fiction explores the experiences of African Americans within the American context. It often engages with the complexities of racial dynamics, social structures, and historical events specific to African Americans. African American science fiction utilizes cultural references, symbols, and imagery that are unique to the African American experience. It may, incur it may incorporate elements from African American history, music, literature, and cultural events, such as the Harlem Renaissance or the Civil Rights uh, Movement. African American science fiction delves into the complexity of African American identity within the American context. It grapples with the themes of double consciousness, the African diaspora, and the search for belonging and self-definition in a society marked by racial inequality and sy systemic oppression. Both the organic spaceships in Binti and the Lilith Brood series are sentient and possess their own consciousness. They are capable of communication with their human occupants. The ships also exhibit self-healing capacities, regenerating and repairing themselves while damaged. These organic spaceships represent a unique blend of technology and biology, reflecting the advanced alien civilizations in their respective stories. Both sets of spaceships reflect uh, humanity's relationship with the natural world. Bindi's spaceship aligns with African cultural values and emphasizes harmony with nature. Octavia Butler's organic spaceships explore themes of humanity's fraught relationship with the environment and the need for a more sustainable and respectful coexistence. In both, in both works, the inclusion of uh, spa uh, organic spaceships serve as a narrative device to explore cultural perspectives, humanity's relationship with the natural world, and the interconnectedness of all life. These elements align with African and African American cultural val values and offer a unique and thought-provoking approach to science fiction storytelling. So first we're going to go over African American science fiction, Octavia Butler's Xenogenesis series. Octavia Butler Xenogenesis series is a collection of three novels that explore the themes of sexuality, gender, race, and species. Dawn. The first novel introduces Lilith Iapo, a human woman who wakes up on an alien spaceship after a nuclear war has destroyed Earth. She learns that the aliens called the Onkali, Owen Kali, have saved the few surviving humans and plan to interbreed with them to create a new hybrid race. Owen Kali are natural genetic engineers and are driven to seek out new life forms and trade with them in order to keep themselves from over-specializing and stagnating. The Owen Kali travel between the stars in immense living ships and send down smaller ships as shuttles to plant living communities. Lilith is chosen to train and lead a group of humans to resettle on Earth, but she faces resistance on both sides. She develops a complex relationship with the Owen Kali and with uh, the, the surviving humans. And the Owen Kali want to impregnate the humans to create a hybrid child. And so why did the Owen Kali save the humans 
after a nuclear explosion destroyed Earth? What is their purpose? Why do the Owen Collie use organic spaceships? Why do the Owen Collie look exactly like their spaceships? So when Lilith awakens after a 205 years sleep, she finds herself imprisoned inside that alien spaceship. The walls of the spaceship have veins that pulsate and breathe. When Lilith touches the walls, the walls feel warm and alive. And in the beginning of the story, Lilith is all alone. And at first, the Owen Kali leave her in isolation to get her used to being awake after 200 years of being asleep. The, the Owen Kali also want to experiment to see how she would react in an alien spaceship. Eventually, the Owen Kali lets her out and lets her interact with other Owen Kali and eventually lets her interbreed with them, creating hybrid children. And so there is a power dynamic between the Owen Kali, the Owen Kali spaceship, and the humans who are treated like prisoners on the spaceship and used as breeding fodder in order to create a new Owen Kali hybrid race. And so therefore there's a power dynamic, kind of like you have the plantation owner, uh, which would be the aliens and the Owen Kali, and then the slaves, which would be the surviving human uh, humans of the nuclear explosion. So you can see that uh, Butler interweaves um, so certain um, historic events that's, that was important to African Americans into her science fiction story. So here you have the nuclear explosion that destroyed Earth. And then the surviving humans are the, the ones that the Owen Kali take prisoner and interbreed with. So in uh, Octavia Butler's novel Dawn, the Owen Kali are described as a race of tentacle aliens who have a complex biology and a unique way of interacting with other species. Here's a description of the uh, Owen Kali based on the information in the book. The Owen Kali are bipedal beings with elongated bodies and multiple sensory appendages. Their most distinct feature is their tentacles, which protrude from their faces and serve various purposes. These tentacles are flexible and sensitive, allowing the Owen Kali to manipulate objects and interact with their environment. The number, the number of tentacles can vary among individuals, but typically there are several ranging in length and thickness. The Owen Collie have a smooth, rubbery skin that is usually gray or grayish green in color. Their bodies are well adapted for survival in different environments, including both land and aquatic habitats. They possess a strong musculature and are physically robust. And I put this description into Bing, and I got this uh, stable diffusion came out with this. Is how the um, stable diffusion thinks the Owen Kali looks look like. This not this is not in the book. Only the description came from the book, but this picture is how the AI uh, stable diffusion, um, you know, uh, interpreted how the aliens look like. So uh, when I put the same words into Bing uh, AI, I get more of something like this is how the Owen, I think it's more like this, what the Owen Kali would look like if there were illustrations of Owen Kali in the book. So as readers, we have to use our imagination as to how the Owen Kali aliens actually look like based on the description in the book. I pretty much imagine them looking like walking octopuses when I was reading the Octavia Butler book Dawn. And um, you cannot see their bipedal legs because the legs are hidden by their tentacles and what, which they use to communicate their emotions to humans, thus making the humans enslaved to them both emotionally and physically. Um, the Owen Kali can also use their humans to heal humans, like to heal humans of many illnesses like cancer. So to me, this is what the Owen Kali look like as I was reading the book. So I think that Bing AI got it much better than, uh, than Stable Diffusion. This is how Stable Diffusion says that the aliens look like. 
One significant aspect of the Owen Collie biology is their unique genetic makeup. They have the ability to manipulate genetic material, both their own and that of other species. The Owen Collie use this genetic manipulation to form alliances with other races and incorporating beneficial genetic traits, traits from those species into their own gene pool. They are driven by a deep instinct to trade genes, believing it to be the key to survival and evolutionary progress. And then um, the Owen Collie then spread their genes throughout the walls of the spaceship. So literally, the Owen Collie can then lock their tentacles into the floor of the spaceship and become one with the spaceship, just like the Borg can lock their tentacles into the keyboard of any ship and then, and then suck information out of the ship. So in that same way, just like the Borg is one with their ship, the Owen Collie is one with their ship. The difference is that the Borg is more met metallic uh, than the Owen Collie. And so here is another Bing uh, rendition of how the Owen Collie would look. Another important aspect of the Owen Collie biology is their reliance on sensory exchange for communication and intimacy. Through the touch of their tentacles, they are able to establish a deep empathic connection with other beings. This allows them to understand and share emotions thoughts, and memories. For the Owen Collie, this form of contact is essential for, for, to foster understanding. And so the Owen Collie possesses a highly advanced biological and technological understanding, and their approach to life and understanding is profoundly different than that of humans. Their tentacles, genetic manipulation abilities, and sensory exchange make them fascinating creatures within the world of Dawn. That is the first book in the series. Adulthood Rights, that's the second book in the Xenogenesis series. The second novel follows Aiken, Lilith's son, who is the first male human Onkali hybrid. He has the ability to understand both cultures and try to mediate between them. He is kidnapped by a group of human resistors who refuse to mate with the Oankali and want to preserve their pure humanity. Aiken learns about their struggle and convinces the Oankali to uh, allow them to colonize Mars, where they can live independently of the Oankali. However, Aiken also realizes that humans are doomed to repeat their self-destructive history unless they change their ways. Adulthood Rights, which is the third book in the series. The third book focuses on Jodas, another child of Lilith and Nakanji, who is the first Uloi human Onkali hybrid. Uloi are the third sex of the Onkali, who can manipulate genes and create offspring from their mates. Jodas has the potential to become a powerful and dangerous being who can alter life forms at will. He also has a strong desire to find mates and form a family. He meets two human siblings, Tomas and Shizusa, who have latent Oankali genes that make them compatible with him. Together they form a new kind of hybrid group that challenges the boundaries of identity and, and belonging. Even though I go over in detail the plots of all the books, remember that the focus of this video is on why Butler uses organic spaceships in her stories and not the traditional metal ships we see in Star Trek. So what is the importance of organic spaceships in this story? So Butler uses organic spaceships in her story to symbolize the Owen Collie's way of life and their relationship with other species. The Owen Collie spaceships are living creatures that can communicate with their passengers and adapt to their needs. Um, the Owen Collie spaceships are also part of the genetic trade as they share some of their biological material with the humans and benefit from their mutations. The or organic spaceships contrast with the human-made spaceships in that are rigid and mechanical, whereas the organic spaceships have walls that have veins and pulsate, and that the Owen Collie alien uh, can then suck their tentacles into the floor of the spaceship, and then the whole spaceship becomes one living being. And so that, is, that shows the interconnectedness between technology 
and man. And so the organic spaceships also represent Owen Colley's respect of life and nature, as they do not harm or exploit any human being, uh, any living being. They are examples of how the Owen Colley and the humans can coexist in harmony and mutual, bene and mutual benefit. At least that's how the Owen Colley think, thinks. But the humans still consider the Owen Kali like the plantation owners or as slaves, since it's the Owen Kali that decides when humans can mate. Because in this story, humans can't even touch each other. In order for them to mate, both mates have to touch the, the Owen Kali o oloi, and then the oloi would then spread their sperms to both humans or eggs in order to create a child. So here is a, a, a rendering by Bing AI of what an Owen Kali spaceship would look like. Now before, okay, in the previous one, is what the Owen Kali themselves would look like. This is what the Owen Kali alien would look like. And then this is what the Owen Kali uh, spaceship would look like. You see, so you see how, so that the spaceship looks just like the alien, as if they're one being. And then I took the description from the novel and stuck it into AI, and that's what I got as the AI rendering of what an Owen Kali spaceship would look like. So in Octavia Butler's Lilith Breed series, the organic spaceships are called Owen Kali ships. These ships are created by the Owen Kali, a highly advanced alien species. The Owen Kali ships are living organisms specifically engineered to travel through space. They are described as large, Levian-like creatures with a smooth, rubbery skin that can change color and texture. The ships possess tentacles or appendages <coughs> that can extend and retract, allowing them to manipulate objects and interact with their surroundings. And this is um, another Bing AI rendering of what an Owen Kali spaceship would look like. The interior of the ships is described as organic and bioluminescent with in intricate biological systems integrated into the structure. And so having these kind of spaceships illustrate humanity's relationship with the natural world. Octavia Butler's works often explore humanity's fraught relationship with the natural world by depicting organic spaceships she challenges the notion of a clear divide between humans and their environment. The ships act as a reminder of humanity's connection to nature and the need to acknowledge and respect that connection. The organic spaceships in this trilogy serve as a metaphorical representation of the blurred boundaries between humans and their environment. They emphasize the importance of understanding and embracing humanity's place within the intricate web of life, promoting a more sustainable and harmonious relationship with the natural world. So overall, Octavia Butler's use of organic spaceships allows her to delve into the themes of identity, power dynamics, and humanity's relationships with the natural world. These spaceships serve as powerful symbols, challenging established notions and providing a thought-provoking lens through which to explore these complex themes. Uh, Octavia Butler, an African-American author, explores themes of identity, power dynamics, humanity's relationships with the natural world in her works. In her Xenogenesis trilogy, uh, which includes a Dawn, Adulthood Rights, and Imago, organic uh, spaceships play a, a dynamic role. The spaceships uh, created by the Owen Kali uh, seeks to genetically merge with humanity. The Owen Kali view the universe and all life within it as interconnected. The spaceships, their spaceships are living beings infused with their own genetic material and capable of communicating with their uh, Owen Kali creators. These spaceships symbolize the philosophy of inter biological interdependence and reflect uh, the author's exploration of humanity's relationship with the natural world. Within the spaceship, all the walls, chairs, food, houses, trees, all come from the wall of the spaceship. 
when the Owen Collie store the humans in sleep pods. The sleep pods are also organic and the sleeping humans are stored within the walls of the live organic ship. Just like a woman stores her child in a womb or just like a, a um, kangaroo stores her baby inside her pouch. And so then the, while the humans are sleeping inside the ship, inside the womb of the ship, the, the, they take the humans take sustenance from the ship, just as a baby takes sustenance from the womb in, in, in a mother's womb. And so the, the ship does have to munch on a few planets to get its food in order to be able to feed the people inside it. So the Owen Collie and the ship are one and the same. The Owen Collie aliens can dig their tentacles into the ship the way the Borg dig theirs into their ship or the way a tree digs its roots into the ground to get food or feed itself. The plants that are grown um, for, for the humans to feed on also come from the membranes and walls of the ship. So the very walls of the ships are the houses within which the humans and the Owen Collie live. And so the ship itself is the universe, and the universe is the ship, and all come from the same genes as the Owen Kali aliens. Here is another rendering of an Owen Kali spaceship by Bing AI. So by using organic spaceships in her narratives, Butler um, recognizes the importance of recognizing and embracing the interconnectedness of all living things. She challenges the idea of humans as separate entities and explores the potential for unity and symbiosis with other forms of life. And so this work explores many different um, themes of humanity and nature, as well as being able to communicate with others through genetic trade. And so the spaceships used by the Owen Kali are organic in nature and serve as vessels for the Owen Kali's mission of genetic trade and interbreeding. These spaceships embody the Owen Kali's philosophy of biological interdependence. And so these spaceships are living beings infused with the Owen Kali's genetic material capable of um, alien, uh, capable of communication and cooperation. And when I put the um, words alien DNA into uh, Bing uh, or into Dali AI, this is what I got. And so the, the organic spaceships in Butler's works also serve as a tool for exploring power dynamics. Um, the Owen Kali used their ships to exert control over the human characters as the spaceships possess the ability to manipulate and alter the human's environment. So this highlights the complex relationship between the, the Owen Kali and the spaceships and the Owen Kali and humans with the ships representing the Owen Kali's uh, dominance and control over humanity's fate. This power dynamic is just like the power dynamic between plantation owners and slaves. By merging with humanity, the Owen Kali emphasized the need for humans to let go of their de destructive tendencies and develop a more harmonious relationship with their environment. So Butler chose to challenge traditional notions of spaceships by introducing organic living vessels in her works. This creative choice allows her to explore unique ideas and themes, offering a fresh perspective on space tra travel and the relationships between humans and their technology. It is important to remember that African American science fiction is American science fiction, just American science fiction influenced by Africans, African themes, but it's still American science fiction. While African science fiction is not about Americans in the future, but about Africans. So, so in my, and so while African American science fiction is American science fiction with African uh, uh, themes. Uh, I'm going to be covering in my next video, I'm going to be covering African science fiction, which has nothing to do, which, which is not, uh, has nothing to do with uh, American science fiction. So in my next 
And then this is the rendering of a group of Owen Collie aliens inside their ship by Desco Stable Diffusion. And so in part two, in my next video, I'm going to talk about African science fiction and how um, Nnedi Okorafor uh, wrote Binti and it's about Africa and African science fiction and Africans in the future. So this ends this video about African American. So in this video I just talked mainly about African American science fiction and the use of organic spaceships and in my next video I'm going to talk about African science fiction and the use of organic spaceships in Binti. So if you have any, and I highly recommend that you read the books by Octavia uh, Butler. Octavia Butler is considered the godmother of American science fiction. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me anytime.